Hi! I am doing a video that I have put off until now. When I did my react to my old music, I also went through a folder that had some of my more recent writing, and by recent I mean like high school, college age, and I found a document just labeled romance novel. I thought it was some sort of fan fiction my friend sent me or something. No, apparently I wrote it. And the most horrifying thing is, I don't remember writing it. I guess I like blocked it out of my mind or something, but I mean, it's obviously me. Like, it's me. I wrote it. I, I just don't remember. And it's like 30 pages. Like, 30 pages. I don't remember writing. So I skimmed through it and it's it's got it's got some stuff in it. Um, if you've ever read like a Harley Quinn novel, like it's <laughs> it's got some stuff in it. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm just gonna start it and get the plot going. And if you are interested and want to hear more of it, let me know and I can, you know, continue reading this to you. And it may be that you don't like me reading to you and you don't like these kind of videos and it's completely fine. But if you do happen to like it and you want me to read more, I can. But uh, it could get real awkward real fast. So I'm just going to go ahead and dive into it and do the best I can without blushing. So let's get started. And just an editor's note, I might change a couple details, uh, fix some spelling, grammar, add in words that I guess I missed and didn't edit this, but I'm not changing any huge plot lines, so. Okay. They were together almost two years. Two years. She had never spent so much time with one person, all for nothing. The worst part is, he's gone. He left. He left her all alone for the last three months wondering. Three months earlier, and even before that, David decided he was joining the army. Just like that, he had said that he wouldn't join for her. The day he decided was the day Claire knew that it was over. They had been ignoring each other for almost a month, and right before Christmas, they mutually broke up. However, no matter what Claire did, no matter who she tried to date, she still loved him. But she never dated anyone else. She thought about it. She really did, but thinking in long terms, she could never find anyone else she'd rather be with. David was the only guy Claire had ever truly loved. He was pretty much her first everything. David was her first real boyfriend, first kiss, first love, and her first. She was still attached to him even now that it made it heartbreaking to think that he didn't love her anymore. Actually, that would have made it easier. It would have made it easier if he had fallen out of love with her, if he had cheated on her, or if he had died because that would give her reason to hate him back. But no matter what she tried to believe, nothing was wrong. The worst was that it was hard to forget him. The whole let's be friends turned out much different than she could have imagined. It hurt to email him, let alone talk to him on the phone, but the worst was seeing him in person because after a short while, they didn't talk anymore. Whether it was five minutes or sixty, she would end up in his arms wishing what they had once was back. After one of those encounters, the bandages of her heart were ripped off again before they were ready. Yes, she did enjoy those little rendezvous, but she seemed to be the only one to feel anymore. Why did she keep emailing, talking, and seeing him? What was that solving? She still dreamt about him almost every night. Cleaning out her desk, she found old love notes reminding of how things used to be, making tears well up in her eyes. Claire tried desperately for almost a year to leave him behind. July rolled around announcing the time for David to leave. Despite the fact that she was trying to move on, Claire couldn't let him leave without saying goodbye. When she rang, he obliged to say goodbye. That had to be a good sign, right? She drove over to his place and saw him come out the door. Oh shit, I can't do this, Claire muttered as he approached the car door. He opened the door and offered his hand. Damn, even when they weren't together, he was still a gentleman. Considering how it ended, it was oddly strange to think they'd gone so wrong. He led her inside and she looked around the familiar house. How many memories were buried in its depths? How many times she had come over to his house searching for a reason finding only love? She glanced at the living room and her gaze fell to the floor. A memory flooded her mind to the first time they made love. She ended up on the floor, things were knocked over, he was late for work and she had carpet burns for a week. <coughs> 
She shifted her gaze to the kitchen where she remembered how great a cook he was. She envisioned the time where she was at the sink washing dishes and glancing in the mirror above the faucet saw him coming up behind her. So what's up? Claire's nostalgia was brought to an abrupt halt. She turned to look at him. Why did he have to look at her like that? His gaze was ever searching and she just wanted his eyes all over her. Not to mention his hands. His hands were resting at his sides, useless, almost twitching at the lack of use. Almost feeling as if his hands were around her, she turned her head away, glancing down the hallway. The far end contained the bedroom. If any a place for memories, it was here. Despite its bright colors, it was a relatively dark room. The sun hit the opposite part of the house, leaving an almost constant shadow in the room. They say it's easier to do things in the dark. That statement seemed to prove itself time and again. So many nights she spent falling asleep in his arms, forgetting the sun would rise, bringing life to the tingled sheets and the masculine scent of his cologne. Oh my god, his cologne was addictive, and she just realized that he was wearing it now. The scent sent shivers down her spine, and to a spot she hoped wouldn't get in the way later. So you're leaving today, huh? Yeah, I'm heading out early. Claire? Yes? She finally brought her gaze back onto his. It looked as if he hadn't looked away at all, but like he had taken a step closer to her. This realization made her uneasy. I'm leaving today. Does that not mean anything? How could he say something like that? Of course it meant something to her. It always did. From the time he told her to this point now, she was breaking from the inside out. How could he think that it meant nothing to her? I mean, she went out of her way to come say goodbye. Of course it means something. I'm really sad that you're leaving and I don't want you to go, but... Whatever Claire was going to say next, she completely forgot. In a mad rush, David had taken the remaining space between them in one fell swoop and kissed her. When he pulled back, she staggered a little as she absorbed what had just happened. She looked up into his face. He was an inch or two from her lips, and she could feel his unsteady, hot breath on her face. David still had his hands on her face and, realizing, slowly dropped them away. The look in her eyes painfully reminded him of their relationship, their love, and their heartbreak. I love you. What? Claire, I'm leaving today. I miss you already, but I had to say that I love you. The ultimate word she had prayed to hear again after they broke up seemed unreal. How could he say that only hours before he was leaving, before he would be gone for three months straight with no contact at all? David, look, I love you too, but you're leaving. Why would you say that right before you left? Why didn't you say that a few months ago when you had more time? I don't know. I don't know why I waited until now to say it, but Claire, he kissed her again. She knew it would be much safer if she pushed him away. Safer for the both of them, but she couldn't refuse. His lips were her weakness. She let him kiss her, and the more he urged her on, the deeper she made the kiss. Finally, she wrapped her arms around his neck and pulled him in. He wrapped his arms around her back, and the gesture was most welcome. She had always felt that this move was safe and secure, and that's what she needed at that moment. The more she thought about the fact that the man she loved and was kissing was about to leave, the more fierce the kiss became. David finally pried their lips apart, breathing hard. This break caused a tear to slide down her cheek. Not sure if he had seen it, she straightened the front of her shirt like she used to and wiped it away as a stray hair. If there was one thing she could do was hide the hurt, excluding the past few months. Breathing slowly and deeply, she looked back at him. He had noticed. Claire. I'm so sorry, I shouldn't have. Claire shook her head fervently. No, it's okay, it's it's understandable. I probably would have done the same thing. She peered desperately around for a distraction, only finding the exercise room that they never used for exercise. At least, they never used it for the typical type of exercise. David glanced at the clock on the wall. The clock they had always looked at when they had somewhere to be and were procrastinating, leaving until the last minute. Claire turned as well. They both knew they had mere minutes left until he had to leave. Just like old times, but this time was different than the others. When she turned her head back for the first time, he wasn't looking at her. He spoke to the floor. Claire, I've got to go now. Her heart finally cracked at those words. No! 
She leapt into his arms and kissed him. Tears streamed down her face as he lifted her with such strength on her lower back. She wrapped her legs around his waist and, before she knew it, was being slammed up against the wall. They never broke contact until they heard the clock chime, the pangs in her heart. She pulled an inch away and froze in his embrace. Her legs were still entwined behind his back and his hands were on her thighs. An eternity stood, staring into each other's eyes, until the clock finally stopped. And so did her heart. David placed his hands under her arms and lowered her back to the floor. I'm sorry, Claire. Walking her to her car, she felt like she wasn't in control of her body anymore. She barely realized that her legs were moving until she crawled into the driver's seat of her car. He shut the door behind her and she rolled the window down. He grabbed her hand with his big, warm hands. He kissed her hand lightly and smiled. Write to me. She nodded dumbly and he went back into the house. Frozen in the seat, the impact of the situation hit her so hard she couldn't breathe. The tears were falling so fast that it scared her, and the ache killed her. That was three months ago. Three months of almost no contact. She had received a letter about a month later from him. She must have read the letter a thousand times, but no matter how many times she read it, she still found nothing discussing what happened between them or how he felt. She then sent the longest letter she had ever written the next day, pouring her heart out and giving all the emotion that his letter had left out and more. Feeling a weight lifted from her chest, now all she had to do was wait. And wait she did. She had done the quick calculation a hundred times. He'd be back around Halloween. On Halloween, she had still not heard anything. They say the anticipation is the worst, but... The next was almost as bad. She did something only desperation was capable of. She asked his ex if she knew when he would be back, because she usually knew more than anyone. Oh! He's already back in town. He got back three days ago. Claire's heart sank. He's been back in town for three days, and he hasn't contacted her? How can he do that? She grabbed her phone. She dialed the number without looking at it. She knew it by heart. Her fingers knew them so well. She heard it ring. With each ring, she remembered that she hadn't heard his voice in three months. She had constantly told him that it would fly by, and needless to say, it was the longest three months of her life. The phone picked up. Hello? I think this is a good stopping place, so please let me know in the comments below if you want to hear more about David and Claire in my romance novel. It will get more graphically detailed, I guarantee that. Yeah, so I do hope you like it, and uh, otherwise, I will see you next week. Bye!